Ever wanted to participate in field day but didn't know where to get started? This video is for you. Hello, my name is John W7DBO and this is the Field Radio Podcast. Thank you for clicking and tuning in on this continuing video series on Field Day 2022. So I thought I would do after getting some uh, feedback on Facebook and comments about, you know, can you kind of explain exactly what is Phil Day? You're talking a lot about it. So I thought, hey, let's uh, do a video, little simple video on getting started. Now, there's a lot of getting started. There's a lot of what is Phil Day videos out there. But this one's going to be a little bit unique, so stay tuned. So first of all, what is Phil Day? So it's a once a year contest. Yes, I said it, contest. It's an event. It's a gathering. It's an emergency communication exercise. It's, it's whatever you want it to be. Um, operators in the U.S. and Canada uh, will move to the field. So they'll take their equipment, they'll go to an off-grid emergency location, temporary mass structures, temporary antenna, and they'll just demonstrate that they can relocate out of their home and uh, operate just fine and make a lot of contacts. Uh, so the goal is, is to make a much, as many contacts as you can. The goal is also to eat as much good food as you can. Uh, the goal is is to you know demonstrate your proficiency in being able to set up a, a remote location. Um, the contest runs always the last full weekend in June, so this year it's uh, June 25th and 26th, and it's 1800 UTC to 2100 UTC. So that's universal time coordinated, but let's make it simple. Uh, 3 p.m. on Saturday Eastern Daylight Time to 6 p.m. Sunday Eastern Daylight Time, and then if you're on the West Coast. Uh, it's 11 a.m. Saturday to 2 p.m. Sunday afternoon. So there's your operating times. Um, how can you participate? Well, if you're licensed, uh, you can join in with a club uh, at a field day location or maybe an emergency operations center. Um, if Or you could create your own field location. So it doesn't necessarily have to be some organized thing. You can just grab a buddy or do it yourself and, and go out in the field and, and set up a station. Uh, you can do mobile. So if you have a mobile setup in your vehicle, you can just go out to your vehicle and, and operate mobile that way. Or you can work from home. So say you want to get into the, the contest aspect of it and you want to just test your, your home station, maybe put your home station on emergency power because really in an emergency communication event, are we really going to abandon our beautiful masts and towers at our home? to go down the road to a field to set up? No, we're gonna run emergency power inside our home where we know we can make the best contact. So maybe it makes sense to you just to set up emergency power at home and see how long you can operate that way. Uh, if you're non-licensed, uh, which means you don't hold an amateur radio license, then go join a club or just show up and just say, hey, I'd like to know more about uh, amateur radio and they'll be gladly um, put you at a station and put you with somebody and kind of show you the ropes and let you let, let you practice transmitting because as long as there's a licensed person there you can you can transmit um and then uh, join with friends who are licensed so if you're not really uh into finding some type of club or organization that's doing it uh you can just grab a friend that is licensed and go out in the field and practice so uh, to be able to find where clubs are located, there's a link I'll put down below to the ARO website. Uh, they've published people that are setting up a location that um, want people to show up and, and participate in. They've they've registered that location. Um, and so you can look on that in the, in the map and see where to go. Okay, so what bands and modes can I operate on? So really, it's just almost everything except a, a few bands that are really set for non-contesting uh, events. So NHF, you know, 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, 10, um, and then all bands above 50 megahertz. So even your handheld, go uh, go outside and turn on your handheld and, and get on a national calling frequency or something and just call CQ Field Day and you'll get people to come back and you'll make contact. So it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, the HF bands. You can just do it off your handheld and, and do it on two meter. Now you can't do it on repeaters, um, uh, but you can do uh, simplex contacts. Okay, so uh, any mode uh, supporting the field day exchange is allowed. So that's talking on the radio, that's phone, uh, CW, uh, digital modes, um, all those are allowed. So if, if you can make the right exchange, uh, that, that mode is allowed. And then you can only have one contact on one band per mode. So say I talk to somebody on 20 meters phone um, I can talk to them on 40 meters phone. I can talk to them on uh, 80 meters phone. I can even talk to them on 20 meters CW. 
Uh, I just can't make a duplicate contact of the, the same person on the same mode on the same band. So, and that's why you'll sometimes people will say, you're a duplicate, and you're like, I had no idea what duplicate meant, but now I do. Okay, so how do I make an exchange? So uh, each contest or event um, has, or activation, has a set of exchange things you need to do. And so for field day, you need to exchange call signs. You need to exchange your operating class and number of stations, and we'll get into that in a second. And then your ARRL section, uh, that's your other thing. So you have three things that you need to share with each other. And by sharing those three things, that, that's what constitutes an exchange. Uh, so operating class. So you have to share your operating class and number of stations. So really briefly, you can look on the ARL website and find a, a greater definition of all this. But really, class A is just a club or non-club. Uh, it just be, means three or more people. Uh, you're an alpha station. If it's one or two people, you're a Bravo station. Uh, if you're mobile in your car, you're a Charlie. If you're at home, you're a Delta. If you're at home on emergency power, you're an Echo. And then if you're at an EOC, you're a Foxtrot. So uh, for me, I will be a one Bravo, which means we have one operating station and we're Bravo because there's only going to be one or two of us uh, operating. Okay, so um, how do I know my section? So if you go, I'll put a link down below. You can see what section you're in. Um, one thing I do is I print out all the sections because sometimes when people are trying to exchange sections and phonetically it's not working. Um, in fact, I have the list here. I've just printed it up. Um, these are all the sections. Uh, if you're not used to hearing Southern New Jersey or San Joaquin Valley, they're trying to send you Sierra Juliet Victor and that that doesn't come through. So they start saying San Joaquin Valley. Well, if you never heard San Joaquin Valley before, that's not even going to help. And so it helps to have a list. So I have a list uh, by abbreviation and then I have a list by name because the abbreviation for each section is not necessarily uh, the, the right order. Um, so anyway, so that's how you can know what section you're in. Just go to the website, figure out what section. But if you're going to joining a club, uh, they're going to take care of all this for you. Okay, so uh, can here's a question. You know, can you show me how to make an exchange? So I'll put this in a graphic up on the screen. So because it will have the same voice. So if I was the calling station, I would say CQ Field Day W7DBO or CK CQ Field Day Whiskey Seven Delta Bravo Oscar. And then as soon as that person finishes their call sign, this is when you jump in. Uh, and you just simply give back your call sign. So uh, my friend Chris, if he was to call back, he would say Kilo Golf 7, India, Victor, Sierra. Uh, and then so usually there's a massive pileup. But if you operate, if you give your call sign slow, first of all, a, a station listening is not going to call back a station that just reads it so fast that they, a, a person, a human, could not even understand. Um, so you just say it methodically, and usually the call signs that, that, that are a little slower, actually the pileup ends, and then you can hear clear as day the person giving their last three. So so the calling station, CQ Field Day, W7DBO, Whiskey 7, Delta Bravo, Oscar, and the calling station comes back nice and slow. Kilo Golf 7, India, Victor, Sierra, nice and clear. Uh, I hear that. Um, and probably because of the pileup, I only heard the last three of the call. So I'll say station ending in India, Victor, Sierra, come back with your full call sign. Now everybody's going to be quiet because, um, and hopefully there's not more than one IVS out there. Uh, so Chris would come back, Kilo, Golf, Seven, India, Victor, Sierra, slow, methodical, and clear. Um, and then so I would say Kilo Golf 7 India Victor Sierra, please copy one Bravo Utah. So I'm calling you back and I'm saying, please copy. I'm one Bravo, which is of a one Bravo station and my section is Utah. Um, and then Chris would come back and there's these Q codes that are kind of used and you'll hear them. You, you may hear QSL, please copy to Alpha Wyoming. So the the Chris coming back to me doesn't have to give us call sign again, just says QSL, which means I copy. Uh, please copy to Alpha Wyoming, which is what Chris's station theoretically would be. Um, and then I would say QSL, which means I had a clear copy of what you said. 
Thank you for the contact. And then because I'm on the frequency and I'm accepting new calls, I would go right into QRZ, which is switching to a new conversation. I would say QRZ Whiskey 7 Delta Bravo Oscar. And then that's it. That's your exchange. You just uh, exchange call signs. You exchange sections and numbers and and uh, class, and, and that's it. So um, the key thing to listen to for is uh, most likely you won't be you know, you won't be running a frequency. You'll be kind of moving around and hunting and pecking. Um, so just kind of listen to the station, listen a couple times. You'll hear that person give their call sign several times and their class and their stay and their section. So go ahead and write all that down in advance. So then when it's your turn, you jump in. As soon as you hear the end of the call sign after a CQ field day or after a QRZ and a call sign, jump in, be slow, methodical, um, and then just give them follow this path and, and give them your call sign. So what I've done for this, uh, because I do have kids that, that help operate with me is I just created this very simple sheet that we just tape to the wall or I hold it down here. And then when I want them to talk, I just point. So I'm w 7 dbo one Bravo, Utah. So I put that there just so anybody that is working, uh, knows what, what class we're under and what section, um, here it's pretty obvious cause everybody's in Utah. There's only one section for Utah. But then I spell it out, Whiskey 7, Delta Bravo Oscar. So when I have my child and I hear QRZ, da, 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 and I key up and I point to this and I say, read this line, just this line. And they'll read just that line. And then uh, they'll come back, hopefully. Um, usually with kids, uh, you get right through because they are the great, greatest pileup busters of all time. People will hear kids talking on the radio and they'll, they'll make room and space for them. Um, and then when it's time for them to say QSL, please copy one Bravo Utah. I point to that. And then sometimes the operator will say 73, have a good day or 73. Thank you for the contact. So I just put seven, three there. And so I point to that. So they know, so this is a nice, simple cheat sheet. Uh, it's good for adults too. Uh, just so you have the exchange written down. And so you're, you're not trying, you know, not being flustered, um, by the, by the exchange. Okay. So um, how do I keep a log? So simply, if you're just getting out for a couple hours, just keep a log on a pen and paper. Just write down who you've contacted. And then if you hear them again, you just look in your paper log and you're like, yeah, I've already contacted this person. I won't, I won't call and incur a duplicate. Um, or just any electronic device. Use your phone, use your tablet, use your laptop. Now, if you're getting a little bit more into it, I recommend the N3 FJP field day software. It's dang cheap uh, and it works amazingly well. It, it identifies duplicates it remembers your section it does it remembers what what band you're on and what mode and so it avoids all that duplicate it'll warn you of a possible duplicate um, it's a great software and so uh, if you want to get that and install that okay so um, final thoughts uh, first of all if this is your first time I highly recommend going with a club uh, find a club or an organization and and go get mentored and go see what it's all about and and not get frustrated with trying to operate in the field uh so that's my first thing but if you if your clubs in your area don't if you don't like them um then yeah go with some friends uh you don't have to go to that standard club uh event um and then start operating around dinner time here in utah it the contest starts at noon mountain if I get on right at noon mountain, I try start transmitting. It is a mess. It is a pile up. All of a sudden the bands come alive. Um, so if this is your first time and you don't plan on operating, don't operate right in the first hour of field day, wait till dinner time. Cause that's when all the good food comes out and stations start getting abandoned. There's times with clubs where no one's even operating during, during the potluck dinner. That's your time to get on so know what is what is dinner time eastern to pacific and and transmit during those hours uh a lot less traffic a lot less pileups a lot less frustrating uh have the cheat sheets like i talked about have all the sections printed out have have what you're going to say printed out so you're not trying to remember what you're going to say you're just going to look at a list and and read off the list uh yeah i have that section list because it if it, it really helps to understand some of these section names uh Know your limits. Um, don't say this is my first time doing field day and I'm going to operate all 27 hours and but I'm gonna set up alone for 24 hours before that. And then I end up in the hospital <laughs> because you're, you're uh, of exhaustion, especially with this year's heat wave. 
uh, just know your limits. Drink a ton of water. Stay in the shade. Make make arrangements to stay in the shade. Just keep yourself safe. You know your limits. Have your personal minimums. I'm not going to operate past this time. I'm going to make sure that I rest. I'm going to take naps or I'm going to stop operating uh, You know, around midnight after I've already tried to get some gray line in. Uh, just, just know your limits. Um, and then set an attainable goal. So what is your goal? Your goal is not going to be getting published in ARL magazine as the top one Bravo station. You know, that's not a goal. A goal is, can I get on the air? Uh, can I stay on the air? Uh, can I be an effective communicator? Can I have fun? Those are attainable goals. Um, I'm simply just going to set up a station to be able to make a couple contacts just to prove that I can do it. Or I want to test out a battery and I want to know how long I can operate on that battery uh, at my certain watts. Or my goal is, is to be able to make a, a digital contact this year. So I'm going to uh, set up my computer and set up my radio in a way that I can make a, a PSK31 or an FT8 contact. And so just have these simple attainable goals and you'll achieve them. Uh, Last of all, just have fun. Uh, this is a fun event. Um, it, it, you can make it a miserable event. And my other videos talked about the site location. You can make it miserable by picking a bad site. You can make it miserable by uh, not having the proper shelter and, and operating with bugs all around you in the middle of the night with a very bad tarp in a rainstorm. Um, you know, plan for comfort. Don't, don't go buy an MRE and say, this is my food. You know, you never plan for the worst. You plan for the best. So get a lot of good food, get a lot of good snacks, get comfortable, bring a comfortable chair. This is not a misery event um, and have fun with it. So I hope this has been helpful for those of you that requested to kind of uh, get a, an overview. It's kind of gone a little bit long, but uh, hopefully this is helpful for you. Um, so as always, get, get your gear together and let's get outdoors and let's get on field day next week. 73.